In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the long division and the short division methods for dividing large numbers. Now, as the name suggests, short division is shorter, but to really understand it, it helps if we do the long division first. So let's start with a nice simple example, 69 divided by 3. Now, I know they're not large numbers, but if we start simple, we can really understand the process. This is asking us to find out how many 3s go into 69. So we could keep adding 3s up until we get there, or we could use our 3 times tables, but we're going to learn how to do it so that when it gets onto larger numbers, we can actually use the same method. So instead of thinking of 69 as just 69, I want to start thinking of it as 6 tens and 9 ones. And I'm just going to put this here underneath the bus stop you might know it as, just to show that's what we are dividing. And then I'm going to put my 3 here to remind us that it's 3 that we are dividing by. So if we consider each digit individually, starting on the left hand side, so starting with the 6, we divide each digit by our 3. So we think how many 3s go into our 6 tens, and that is 2. So it's in our tens column because it was six tens and two tens actually means 20. So, so far we've got an answer of 20, but we know that three times 20 is only 60. So we haven't yet got enough threes to work out how many more threes we need. We do our three times two, which is six. And because our two, it was two tens, we put the six here in the tens column. We then take that away. So 6 take away 6 is nothing, but we've still got these 9 ones that we need to find. We then consider this digit. So how many 3s go into 9? Well, that is 3. And because 3 times 3 is 9, we can take away our 9 ones and we're left with nothing still to find. So we've got 2 tens and 3 ones. 2 tens is 20. So 20 times 3 is 60, 3 ones is just 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. So we can see that in total our 23 will give us 60, add 9, which is 69 what we wanted. So our answer is actually 23. Now this was a nice easy example because 3 went in exactly into each digit and there was no remainders. So let's have a look at a slightly more difficult example. So now let's try 51 divided by 3. I'm keeping the numbers nice and small for now so that we can see what's going on and we'll try some larger numbers later. So again, we pop our 51 underneath the bus stop because that's what we're dividing. And we put our 3 outside to remind us that we need to divide each digit by 3. So we start off with our 10s, so our 5 tens, And we see how many 3s go into 5. Well, that's only 1. Two threes would be too many because that is six. So we can only fit three in once. Now, three times one would give us three tens. So we needed five tens and we've only got three. So if we take away that three, we can see that we've still got two tens left. Now, two tens is actually the same as 20 ones. So we can bring down the one and consider it together as 21 ones. We now think how many 3s go into this 21. Now we know that 3 times 7 is 21, so that actually goes in 7 times. And just to double check, 3 times 7 is 21, so if you take that away, you're left with nothing left over. So here, our answer this time is 17. And just to check that, 10 times 3 is 30. 7 times 3 is 21. Add those together and you get your 51. So hopefully you're starting to see what we're doing. And let's move on to a more difficult example. So now let's try 875 divided by 7. Still not really big numbers, but a little bit bigger. Now if you don't know your 7 times table, it helps to write them out up to 10 times. You'll never need more than 10 times the number. So 2 times 7 is 14, 3 times 7 is 21, and so on. 
So here you go, I've written out the seven times table up to ten times. You'll actually not even need ten times, you'll only ever need up to nine times, but it's good to go to ten times because it's an easy check that you've gone correct the whole way up. So now let's do the division. 875 divided by 7. So the 875 goes under the bus stop and the 7 eighths outside. So we start with the left hand digit. How many 7s can we fit into 8? Well we can see from our times table that we can only fit 1. 2 would be too many. So 1 lot of 7 is 7. We take that away which leaves us with 1. Remember this is actually our hundreds column. So this means that we've put 7 in 100 times. Take away the 7 hundreds which leaves us with 100. 100 is the same as 10 tens. So we can join that to the 7 tens to make 17 tens. We now ask ourselves how many 7s can we fit into these 17 tens. Again looking at our times table on the left hand side here we can see that we can only fit it in twice. Three times would be too many. So we can fit it in twice, so two lots of 10. That would give us 14 lots of 10. Two times seven is 14. So if we take that away, that leaves us with three lots of 10. Now remember, three lots of 10 is the same as 30 lots of one. So we can join it with our ones. So bring down our five to give us 35 ones. How many sevens go into 35? Look down here on the left hand side and we can see that five sevens give us 35, so we can fit five in. Now five sevens is 35, take that 35 away and you're left with nothing, so it goes in exactly. So 875 divided by 7 is 125, our answer up here. So again, hopefully you're starting to see how it works and the important thing is we bring down the next digit each time. So after we've taken away the hundreds, we can bring down our 10. After we've taken away the tens, we can bring down our ones. So let's do another more difficult example. Okay, so let's have a look at the example 2,563 divided by 13. Now I've written out my 13 times table down the left hand side here to help us. And we need to put the 2,563 in the bus stop and then 13 outside to remind us that's what we're dividing. So we start with the 2. How many 13s can we fit into 2? Well, that's none. So we don't have anything to take away and we're left with the 2. At this point, we bring down our 5. So we've now got 25, which is actually 25 hundreds because we're now in the hundreds column. So how many 13s go into 25? Well, that's only one because 2 lots of 13, 26 would be too many. So 1 lot of 13 gives us 13, so we need to take that away. And that leaves us with 12 hundreds, which we can then join with our 6, bring down our 6, and think of it instead as 126 or 126 tens. So looking down our times tables, we can actually fit that in 9 times 10 would be too many because that's 130. But 9 lots of 13 would give us 117. So we take 117 away from 126. Well, that's 9. And then finally, we bring down our 3 and join it with our 3. So we've got 93 ones. Now 93, we can fit 13 in 7 times, 8 times would be too many, so 7 times and that would give us 91. So take the 91 from the 93, leaves us with 2. Now we don't have any more digits to bring down, we've already brought down our last digit, the 3, so we've just got this 2 left over the end. 13 doesn't go into 2, so it is a remainder, so I'm going to put up here for now remainder 2. You can continue with decimals, we could put a point and zero, 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 or you could make it into a fraction, but that's in another video. For now, we are just going to leave it as a remainder. So 13 goes into 2,563, 197 times, with two left over. So now it's your turn, pause the video and have a go at these, and I'll give you the answer in a second. 
So for this first one, 512 divided by 8. 8s don't go into 5, so we're taking away nothing. Leaves us with 5 and bring down the 1. 8s into 51 go 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. Take 48 from 51, leaves you with 3, and then bring down the 2. So 8s into 32 goes 4 times. 4 times 32, 4 times 8 is 32, so take the 32 from the 32, so there's no remainder. So your answer is 64. Question 2, put the 368 in the bus stop, the 4 outside. How many 4s go into 3? Well, that's none, so we've got nothing to take away. And then we can, left with 3 left over, and we bring down the 6. 4s into 36 goes 9 times. 4 times 9 is 36, so 36 take 36 is nothing. And then we bring down the 8. 4s into 8 goes twice. So take away the two lots of 4, which is 8. 8 take away 8 is nothing. So our answer is 92 exactly with no remainder. And finally, 4,572 divided by 15. Now you may have needed to write out your 15 times table, but 15 into 4s doesn't go, so you take away nothing and then bring down your 5. 15s into 45 goes 3 times, and 3 times 15 is 45. So 45 take 45 is nothing and bring down your 7. 15s into 7 doesn't go. So you take away nothing, so you've still got your 7, and you bring down your 2. 15s into 72 goes 4 times. So 72 takes 60 is 12. So we have a remainder of 12. So 15 goes in 304 times with 12 left over. Okay, so now let's have a look at short division. Now it's exactly the same principle as what we've been doing, but you just don't have to write everything out. So let's have a look how it works. We put the 579 inside the bus stop like we did before because that's what we're dividing. And we put the 4 outside to remember that's what we're dividing by. So we start on the left hand side with the 5 and ask ourselves how many times does 4 go into 5? Well that's once. But if we take away one lot of 4 which is 4, we've still got one left over. So we pop the 1 next to the 7 here, we carry it into the tens column because remember 100 is the same as 10 tens. So now we've got 17, we ask ourselves how many times does 4 go into 17? Well that's 4 times because 4 times 4 is 16. So then we take the 16 away from our 17 which leaves us with, with 1 and we put the 1 up here next to the 9 to make 19. We then ask ourselves how many times does 4 go into 19? And again, that's 4. 5 times 4 is 20, so that's too many. So 4 fours is 16. So from our 19, we've got 3 left over. So 579 divided by 4 is 144 remainder 3. Now you can see there's a lot less working here, but you do have to do a lot more in your head. Let's have a go at another simple example, and then we'll do a more difficult one. So 273 divided by 2. So pop the 273 inside and the 2 outside. How many times does 2 go into 2? Well, that's 1. And there's none left over because 1 lot of 2 is 2. So we've got nothing to carry. How many times does 2 go into 7? Well, that would be 3. 4 lots of 2 is too many. So 3 times 2 is 6, 7 take away 6, and we've got 1 left over. Now we ask ourselves how many 2s go into 13. Well, that would be 6, because 6 times 2 is 12, 7 2s is too many. So 6 times 2 is 12, 13 take away 12, leaves us with 1 remainder. So 273 divided by 2 is 136 remainder 1. And this is actually the same example we did earlier. Now the principle is exactly the same, we just don't have to write everything out. So we put the 2563 under the bus stop, the same as in long division, and the 13 outside. And we think to ourselves, start with the digit on the left, so the 2, how many 13s go into 2? Now that is nothing, but then we do the subtraction in our heads. 2, take away no lots of 13, is 2. 
So we pop our 2 up here with the 5. So now we know it's 25. So we ask ourselves, how many times does 13 go into 25? That's once. And 1 times 13 is 13. So we take that away from our 25, which leaves us with 12. So how many times does 13 go into 126? That is 9 times. 9 times 13 is 117. So take that away from the 126, leaves us with 9. And for my 93 then, how many times does 13 go in? Well, that's 7. And 7 13s is 91. So take that away and we've got a 2 left over. So if you compare that back to earlier, it's a much shorter way of doing it, but you do have to do a bit more in your head. Let's just do one more quick example just to see what happens if we have a 0 in it. So we do exactly the same thing. 306 divided by 7. So we see how many 7s go into 3. That's none. So we still have our 3 left over. We do exactly the same thing and carry it. But we had no 10s to add it to. So we've just got our 300s, which makes 30 10s. So it's the exact same method. You just treat a 0 as you do any other number. So 7s into 30 goes 4. 4 7s is 28. So that leaves 2 left over. And then 7s into 26 goes 3. 3 7s is 21, so we have a remainder of 5. So if you have a 0 in there, you just treat it in the exact same way that you do with any other number. OK, so now time for you to have a go. So pause the video and have a go at these two questions, and I'll give you the answers in a second. So we put our 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 inside our bus stop. 3 outside. How many 3s into 5? That's 1, remainder 2. How many 3s into 24? That goes 8 times exactly, so there's no remainder to carry. How many 3s in 3? That goes once exactly, so there's nothing to carry. How many 3s go into 2? We can't fit any 3s into 2, so we've still got our 2 left over. And how many 3s into 21? That goes 7 exactly. So the answer is 18107, 18,107. Final example then, 98765 goes under the bus stop and 5 outside. We can fit 1 5 into 9 and that would leave us with 4 left over if we take away the 5 from the 9. 5s into 48 we can fit 9 in. 9 5s are 45 so that leaves us 3 left over from our 48. 5s into 37 we can fit 7 times. 7 times 5 is 35 so we've got 2 left over. 5s into 26, we can fit 5 in. 5 times 5 is 25, so we've got 1 left over. And then 5s into 15 goes 3. So again, we've got an exact answer, 19753, 19,753. So hopefully you now understand how to do long and short division. Short division is much easier to write down and quicker, but it does require you doing more in your head. If it's a more difficult division, I would suggest doing long division. And don't forget, you can write out your times table if it helps you. So if we go back to our example where we were dividing by 13, not many people know their 13 times table. So having it written out down the side can really help you. And the numbers can quite get quite big, so it might help to write all this out, even if it is more work. Alright, good job and I'll see you again soon.